Hi everyone, welcome to another Infura tutorial. Today we are talking about the Trace API. The Trace API can give you a step-by-step -step analysis of a transaction execution. So not all transaction details are recorded on the blockchain and Trace is here to provide you with those details. The main use cases are analysis, debugging, and smart contract security. So if you don't have Trace, you might be missing something. Infura offers a total of five API methods trace transaction, trace block, trace call, trace call many, and trace filter. Just as an FYI, you need to be a paid user to access the trace API and all of its goodness. So if you are a core free user today, it looks like now is a good time to upgrade your plan. Once you're in, use an existing API key, or you can create a new one as shown here. Infura has quite a few networks, but for the trace API open beta, it is limited to use on Ethereum, Sepolia, and Gurley. Now that you know what it does, let's see how you actually use it. Starting with trace transaction, we can use this API to understand what happened during a transaction. And the most common examples are looking at the amount of gas that was used, the output values, or maybe the reason why a transaction failed. So this is a great tool to optimize the performance of your smart contract and really see what's going on. In the example here, we will provide the transaction hash as a parameter and then in return, we'll receive the transaction trace based on the provided transaction hash, which shows us the details of the transaction. Pretty simple, right? Now, let's look at using the trace block API, which gives us all the transactions for any given block. Users will use this to analyze blockchain behavior. So in this example, we'll use the block number as the parameter, and then in return, we'll get the transaction trace for every transaction in that block. Pretty easy. Okay, now let's look at the trace call API. This searches for information on a specific call, and then it just returns us that information. So to get the info that you're looking for, you'll need to provide the transaction the type of transaction and also include the block number. So those are the three parameters that you will want to use. So here we're providing the recipient's address as the transaction object. We're saying trace as the transaction type and then setting the block number to latest. And then uh, we will hit send and we will receive the transaction trace tree based on those parameters that we set. All right, now we have trace call many, which is just like it sounds. You basically can trace multiple calls at one time. So as a user, you'll provide a list of transaction objects. And then also um, when you're searching, include the trace type and the block number as well, just like you did for the trace call API. So like the output of trace call, trace call many will return a list of trace trees for all the transactions that you're looking for. So again, in this example that you see here, we're using a list of transaction objects. We're saying latest block, and then we get back a list of trace trees. So let's see that in action. Nice. Next is trace filter. So here you put in specific parameters that you're looking to filter for, and in return, you'll receive a list of transactions that meet those criteria. So you'll use parameters like block number, the to address, the from address. So if you're like me and you like to snoop on your friends and see what NFTs they're into, this is the perfect API for you. Oh, and of course, you can also use it for more important things like debugging and whatnot. So here's what it looks like. We're providing an address as the filter and we are seeing what we get back in return, which will be the transaction uh, trace tree. So let's do that. There you go. And that's it. Thanks for listening and happy building.